Hello and welcome to FD, where today we're looking at 10 players rejected by almost everyone this summer. 10. Romelu Lukaku Though his return to Inter started badly with opposition from the club's fanatical ultras, Romelu Lukaku ended the season in the Neretsuri's good books. He bagged 16 goal involvements in 1,600 league minutes and added 4 in 8 in the Champions League to help his team to third and a European final, convincing Simone Inzaghi to pursue a permanent deal for the Belgian over the summer. But Lukaku had his own plans and it has been revealed that the strikers' representatives held secret talks with Juventus as Inter prepared for the UCL final. Permanently souring relations with the Lombardi side, the ultras this time releasing a public statement likening Lukaku to the killers of Julius Caesar and saying, quote, before being a champion, you have to be a man, and you're not. And to make the situation even more uncomfortable, Lukaku may not even get his 40 million euro move to Juve, as the Biancaneri need to shift Vlaovic to finance the deal, and no serious interest is currently brewing for the Serb. If the transfer doesn't go through, Lukaku could spend next season marooned at Stamford Bridge. He'll only have himself to blame. 9. David De Gea some of the players moving to Saudi Arabia this summer are big names nearing the end of their careers, and others are peak signings designed to show the division's growing power. But David De Gea is the rare player who needs the SPL more than they need him. The Spaniard finally left Manchester United after 12 years and 190 clean sheets. 10 more than Peter Schmeichel, after a humiliating contract dispute in which he was agreed an extension only for United to reconsider the salary they had offered him and return with a lower wage, prompting the former Atleti man to pack his bags. It's remarkable that the current holder of the Premier League Golden Glove Award can have such low stock, but the 32-year-old's ropey distribution has looked increasingly out of place compared to modern passing keepers, and that leaves him stuck. His goalkeeping style is fine for sub-elite teams, but they can't afford his exorbitant 370 25k a week wages, while big clubs understandably feel they can get a younger and more well-rounded stopper instead. In that context, a move to Saudi, where De Gea could reportedly double his money, makes sense. But given his pedigree, the keeper will surely be devastated to leave Europe with just a single league title to his name. 8. Adama Traore Following a return on loan to Barcelona in 2022 that yielded just four league starts and zero goals, Adama Traore's career has lacked a clear path, with the Spain international running down his contract at Wolves and so far failing to find a new employer this summer. Initially linked with a move to Milan, the Italian giants ended up walking away from negotiations to pursue other targets, with Christian Pulisic and Noah Okafor since arriving to rejuvenate the Rosaneri attack. And while links have since emerged with Fenerbahce, there has hardly been a long list of suitors for the 20 year old and it would be understandable if he is looking to use his free agent status to negotiate a big money contract. Once one of Europe's rawest attacking talents, not only has Traore's output dried up, but also his overall danger in the final third, with his dribbles dropping from seven a game to just three over the last 18 months. It's little wonder then that clubs have been cautious to make an approach. 7. Eden Hazard the PFA Fans Player of the Year and Chelsea Player of the Year as recently as 2019, it's staggering that Eden Hazard has been a free agent for over a month. The Belgian is among the best Premier League footballers of the last decade, made the team of the season four times and counts five titles and a Champions League among the honours he's won in his career. But after just 2,500 minutes for Real Madrid in four years, fewer than he earned in his final term at Chelsea, his market value has plummeted from a peak of 150 million euros to just 5 million. A cost of 100 million pounds up front plus over 20 million in salary meant that Hazard cost Los Blancos 2.4 million pounds per appearance and 26 million per goal, with the wide man scoring just seven times in Spain while lifting six trophies. And his physical drop-off makes it hard to see who would sign him now, as he made his name with pace and agility, at his height completing over six dribbles a game and leading the Prem in progressive runs and runs into the penalty area. With his only potential suitors at present into Miami, whose interest has cooled, and Belgian side RWD Molenbeek, where his brother Killian plays, it seems that at 32, Hazard's stellar career is already done. 6. Joao Felix 2023 was meant to be the year Joao Felix finally showed his quality. The Portuguese had played fewer minutes in each successive season at Atletico Madrid, but it was hoped Graham Potter's Chelsea could revive his fortunes, with Mason Mount's struggles leaving Felix's favoured spots behind the striker wide open. However, a red card on his debut set the tone for a disappointing spell, and while the 23-year-old did get more service, hitting new highs for shots, progressive receptions and touches in the box, he couldn't get past PL defenders, completing just 37% of his dribbles 
while he produced just 0.6 chances a game. He ended up with four goals in half a season, costing the Blues roughly £16 million along the way, and in 20 appearances he won just four games and lost 11, unsurprisingly getting a thumbs down from new boss Mauricio Pochettino. But that hasn't hurt Felix's ego, the forward publicly declaring he'd love to play for Barcelona in hopes of forcing a move, one that would require the Catalans to cough up €90 million. Euros. With price tag, wages and a poor track record all against him, it's hard to see even the Blaugrana doing something this stupid. 5. Hakim Ziyech once among Europe's most exciting playmakers, Hakim Ziyech joined Chelsea in 2020 in astonishing form. The Dutch-born Morocco international had made the Eredivisie Team of the Year in four of the previous five campaigns, as well as winning a title and reaching a Champions League semi-final, and he'd been Ajax's Player of the Season three years running, thanks to an incredible 130 goals and assists in 165 appearances. Sadly, he never quite made sense in England. His elegant and languid style lacked the energy to play as a 10, and he simply didn't have the speed to be a Premier League winger, and while he still had an eye for a pass, averaging over two chances created per game for the Blues, he was never fully trusted and played just 31% of available minutes. So it seemed a good solution when Al Nazir offered Chelsea £17 million to take him off their hands, only for their 200k a week proposal to swiftly disappear when Ziyech's hip injuries torpedoed his medical. Being too unfit for Saudi football is not a good look. Ziyech must regret ever leaving Amsterdam. 4. Jesse Lingard much like Lukaku, Jesse Lingard's situation seems like the product of self-hype. The former England international enjoyed a sensational loan at West Ham in 2021, producing 13 goal involvements in half a season, and the Irons wanted to make the move permanent. But instead of pushing to leave, Lingard elected to compete with Bruno Fernandes at Old Trafford, a choice which resulted in 367 league minutes across a full year. His contract ran out in the summer of 2022, and once again Lingard made a foolish decision, opting to join Nottingham Forest instead of the Hammer with the newly promoted club paying him an extraordinary £120,000 a week. Lingard made 12 starts all year and just one after Christmas for a team battling relegation, taking just 10 shots across 12 months and failing to score or assist in league play. Now without a club, Lingard's only interest has come from DC United, whose coach Wayne Rooney admitted they only put him on their discovery list so they'd earn a fee if Lingard joins another MLS team. Ouch. 3. Alexis Sanchez Alexis Sanchez may be rarely discussed these days, but the Chilean quietly had a stellar year in 2022-23. Pitching up at Marseille after two years and three trophies with Inter Milan, the now 34-year-old missed only three league and fixtures all season, scoring 14 and assisting three to help one of Europe's great historic teams back into the Champions League, only to leave immediately in June in the hope of greater glory. But opportunities look scarce for the former Arsenal star and Team of the Year nominee. According to reports, he tried to engineer a return to the Gunners only for old teammate Mikel Arteta to say thanks but no thanks, and it's understandable. With his age stifling his once legendary work rate, seeing his defensive output hit a career low, shot creating actions fall to 3.9, around half their peak, and dribble stats worse than he managed in his appalling Old Trafford stint. Though Premier League sides, as well as Juventus and PSG, are supposedly monitoring Alexis, such a move would mean a backup striker role at best, the attacker's 902 career appearances sapping his legs of the energy to either start or play out wide. Don't rule out an embarrassed Sanchez returning to the south of France. 2. Nicola Pepe in the excitement around Declan Rice's club record transfer to Arsenal this summer, it's easy to forget that the man his price surpassed remains on the books. Nicola Pepe only joined the Gunners in 2019, but it took under three years to play his way out of favour, with a solid 25 goal involvements in 43 starts, undercut by an unsatisfactory work rate and wastefulness on the ball, the Ivorian losing possession more than any of his teammates in two of his three seasons. A loan to Nice has failed to reignite the wide man, with just six strikes all year, and while he remains capable of genius, taking three shots, creating 1.7 chances and completing two dribbles per 90, he is now 28 and reportedly Arsenal are considering paying up the final 12 months of his deal just to get him out of the club. But even in that context, once again, the player has little interest outside Saudi Arabia, unsurprising given that he earns more each week than Paolo Dybala or Victor Rossimen. In another world, Pepe might well have become a useful rotation player for Arteta. You could even argue that the Gunners needed him as Saka tired last term. Sadly, we'll never see the best of him at the Emirates. 1. Harry Maguire 
Paying a huge fee can sometimes make sense. If you expect long service from a player or they fit your system exactly, an overspend is occasionally necessary. But in Harry Maguire's case, Man United must feel some regret. The Englishman cost the Red Devils £80 million in 2019 and has earned another £40 million since. And while his impact is underrated, the club finishing sixth before he joined but making the Champions League in three of his four campaigns, he's never been fully embraced at Old Trafford and made just eight league starts last year under Eric Ten Hag. The coach has now stripped Maguire of the captaincy and though he's homegrown and just 30, he's been short of suitors this summer, with the best offer so far from West Ham, who reportedly only presented a loan deal to United. That's because Ten Hag apparently wants £45 million for the centre-back, but if the club wants to shift him, that needs to come down, especially because of his £190,000 a week wages, which will cost United another £20 million if he sees out his contract up to 2025. Perfectly useful in a deep block and with more England goals than John Terry, there must be a home for Maguire somewhere in top-class football, but he may well have to swallow his ego and cut his pay to find it. So those were 10 players that nobody wants, but where can you see them ending up this summer? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and subscribe to FD if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.